the Arctic is really raising a red flag. If you look at the Arctic, it's warming at twice the rate for the globe as a whole. We see the Arctic sea ice cover, its floating sea ice cover, shrinking very quickly in summer. The Greenland ice sheet is losing mass and is contributing to sea level. Permafrost is warming and thawing. We're really seeing a radical transformation of the Arctic. And what it's telling us is that climate change is not something that's out there 40 years from now, maybe something that just our children or our grandchildren are going to have to deal with. It's telling us that climate change is here and now, and it's here in a big way. Well, what I really wanted to do here in this book is get across the idea of how science actually works. I mean, really, if you think about scientists, we're detectives in a sense. Uh, we, uh, we look for evidence, we track down clues, we play on hunches. Uh, it really is, I think, a very noble enterprise, but it's also a very, very human one. You know, sometimes we make mistakes, we get off the rails sometimes. Unfortunately, science and politics kind of mix somehow, uh, sometimes. Uh, but it, it's a very human process, and uh, what I really wanted to do was tell it like it is, how science is actually done, but from the viewpoint of a scientist who was there at the beginning when the Arctic first started to stir and saw it all happen. Climate scientists are trained to be skeptics. I mean, really all scientists are trained to be skeptics. And for me, it was never a question of whether we would see the Arctic changing in response to human activities, that is, loading the atmosphere with greenhouse gases. It was really a question of if we had seen those changes yet. We saw the Arctic changing in the mid-1990s. It was very clear that the Arctic was changing. But it wasn't clear why, because we saw these very strong imprints of what we call natural variability, natural variations in weather patterns and things like that, which in large part could explain these changes. But we figured that the effects of human activities were on the way, they were coming. Had we seen them yet? I wasn't convinced. And it was around the year 2002, 2003, somewhere in there, where the evidence at that point just became so overwhelming that, uh, that I climbed off the fence and became entirely convinced that it was us. 2007 was uh, a very memorable year, I think, in, in Arctic climate science. Um, now, basically what happened is that we, at that point, set the all-time record low for the amount of sea ice that we'd seen in the Arctic Ocean. And um, it wasn't just that it beat the old record, it's that it completely blew it away. We'd been watching the sea ice decline in the Arctic. Uh, we started the, the melt season with, with sea ice well below normal, but by that time, well, no one was really surprised. We were getting used to this sort of thing. But really, through the summer, you saw the entire Arctic community just watch what was happening to the sea ice cover with a mixture of just awe and dismay. Uh, it was crazy. Uh, and Huge areas of the sea ice cover were just being eaten away. We'd never seen anything like this before. Um, it was really this eye-opener. We knew that climate change was here. We knew it was probably going to get worse, but what we saw happening was just, just something we'd never seen before. I wish that we could have separate conversations on the science of climate change and what we're seeing and what we should do about it. Uh, these really, I think, should be separate conversations. There's certainly unknowns out there about where the climate is going to go, just how much it's going to warm up, and there's going to be some surprises out of there. But the basic science behind climate change and what we are doing to the climate is unassailable. The physics have been understood since the end of the 19th century. Uh, what we should do about it? Well, there's all plenty of conversation that we could have about that. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, as I've mentioned before, uh, science and politics sometimes get twisted, and it's unfortunate that that's the case.